Did y'all get the document that I sent out? Yeah. If you got to print it, sorry it was so late, but uh, we can look at multi-loop circuits and then also RC circuits and then also we have the magnetic field. And if you want to do the right hand rule, that's fine. Uh, anything in particular? The multi-loop circuits. Okay, so on the test you'll have a couple of things. One, you'll have a question like this one where you have to figure out which of the equations is correct. And on this one, um, what you want to do is start at the first one. Actually, first, you're either going to be looking at the junction rule, like right here, or at the root rule, like right there. So in that junction rule, you have I1 plus I3 equals to I2. All right, so what you want to do is just pick a junction. So I pick a junction right here. The junction rule says that the incoming currents have to equal the outgoing currents. And so you look at which currents are incoming. Now remember, with a multi-loop circuit, you have three different currents. You have one current there, you have another current there, and then you have another current here. I1, I2, and I3. Those are all distinct currents. And so at this junction, I have I1 coming into that junction, I2 also coming into that junction, and then I3 going out of that junction. So it would be I1 plus I2, those are the incoming, equals to I3. So you want to check your, your junction rule and make sure that it's correct or incorrect. In this case, it's incorrect because instead of I1 plus I2, it says I1 plus I3. All right, so that one's not the right answer. And then for the next one, with your loop rules, the way I lay these out, you're going to have all the elements in the loop rule are going to be in the appropriate order. That means I'm not going to jumble the terms all up. So if I look at 14, I look at the first two terms, 14 minus 4 I1, that means that I'm starting here and I'm going in this direction. I know that because I have the 14, that's my first thing, and then the 4 I1 is the next thing. And then I want to ask myself, is the sign right? And is the current correct? And are all the elements there? So at 14, uh, it's positive. It should be positive, right? Because it's going from little to big. And then it has minus 4i1. Now, with currents, with uh, batteries, two things matter. Excuse me. With resistors, two things matter. The direction of the current and the direction that you're traveling through the circuit. So if you're going with the current, it's a negative change in potential. If you're going against the current, it's a positive change in potential. With batteries, it's different. The direction of the current doesn't matter at all. All that matters are, are you going from low to high potential? That would be positive. Or are you going from high to low potential? That would be negative potential drop. So here, is it positive or negative IR? It should be 14. That's positive because I'm going from big to little. And then here I would have 4 times I1, positive or negative 4I1? It's going to be negative 4I1. The reason, because I'm going with the current. Let's see what else I got. And then I have plus 6. I come down here. Is that right? Should it be positive or negative 6? I'm going from the little side to the big side. Is that correct? It is correct. All right, because my I think of my electrons like they gain energy when they go up that battery, like on the roller coaster. And so that is the answer. B is the answer. But let's just look at these others. I have a 14 plus 4I1 on this second one, plus 10 plus 6I2. That has all, uh, actually it only has one error. The third equation is... 14 plus 4i1 plus 10 plus 6i2. Look at that and tell me that's all equal to zero. What do you think is the problem? It's a very similar equation to what we had before. But I start here, but here instead of going down, I'm going to make this sweep. So this equation covers the top loop. But what's the problem with that equation? 14 plus 4i1 plus 10 plus 6i2. 
What's that sound effect? Now the direction is okay, right? I, I can shoot in any direction I want, but I've chosen to go through this circuit in this direction. At least that's how the elements fall in that equation. I know because it's the 14, and then the 4i1, and then the 10, and then the 6i2. But what's the problem with this equation? There's one mistake in this equation. Like what? What's wrong with it? You're right. You're right. Yeah, this should be negative. Because over here, positive 14, that's correct, minus 4i1, because I'm going with the current. So I should have a negative drop of potential. Plus 10, that's correct. Direction of the current doesn't matter for batteries. Only the direction you travel through the circuit. And then this should be plus 6i2, because I'm going against the current. So that one's not correct. And then this last one, 10 plus 6i2 plus 6. Uh, that's going to be starting here, 10 plus 6i2. Okay, so far. This shouldn't be plus 6, it should be minus 6, because I'm going from high to low potential, and so those electrons are actually losing energy as they go across that battery. It's very important that you're able to create these equations uh, for these for these multi-loop circuits. It'll come up in a question like this, which you'll certainly have, and then also you'll have a couple questions where you're uh, calculating what the current is, and being able to calculate the current is, is part of creating these circuits. Let's look at the next one, because that's how it's going to be on the exam. You'll have a circuit like this where you have to pick out the right equation, and then you'll have one where you have to actually calculate something. So it asks, what is the current through the 4 ohm resistor? So that is, what is I1? What is I1 equal to? So, when you're looking at this, you want to pick a loop that has a portion of it with no resistance. So notice here that if we pick this big loop here, I would have an equation that would have two unknowns. It would have I1 in it, because I have this 4I1, and then it would also have I2 in it because I have this 6i2. But which loop can I choose, the bottom or the big loop, that would only have one unknown? The big loop, right. Because I want to know what i1 is, so it either has to be the top loop or the big loop. But I choose the big loop because, look, no resistors down here. So the current doesn't figure into the equation. Because there's, there's no resistors there. It just doesn't, there are no potential drops because of the current. So if I were to write an equation, Start here, say, and go in this direction. Positive or negative 14? Be positive 14. Plus or minus 4i1? Minus 4i1. Um, plus or minus 6? A plus 6. Because I'm going from little to big. And that's all equal to 0. And then you solve that for i. Uh, negative 20 to the force can be 5 amps. 5 amps is the right answer for that. It comes out positive. That means that the direction for the current we chose correctly. So the current, I1, really does flow in this direction. And I know that because I1 is equal to positive 5. And we've done some other problems where I asked you for the direction as well, and you should know how to do that. But it's if you come up with a negative number for the current, you just take the opposite direction for that, for that uh, current. Okay? Want to look at some others? Number five. Okay, this is very similar. Uh, let's just look at a couple of the, the equations. I want to be able to do some RC circuits as well. So I have 30I1, this first one, 30I1 plus 20I2. That means I'm starting right here, and I'm going in this direction. I know that because I just look at those first two elements. The 30I1 comes up first, and then the 20I2 comes right after it. So that's how I, that's how I know that I'm going, starting where I am, and going in the direction that I'm going. Because if I look at this equation, 30I1, that's this element, 20i2, that's this element. Alright, so 
uh, keep going. Should it be positive or negative 30I1? Well, I'm going with the current. So that first one should be negative. This should be a negative value. Uh, it should be positive 20I2 because I'm going against the current. It should be positive 1I2. And it should be minus 80 because I'm going from big to little. And then I come back. So this is the only mistake, but it's enough to make it not the right answer. Let's see, what is the right answer? Uh, minus 40 I3 plus 80. All right, B is not the right answer. Can y'all spot the, the problem with B? Caitlin, you know what the problem is? You're fine. Can y'all read it okay? You can zoom in a bit. What's the problem with B? Minus 40I3 plus 80 minus 1I3 minus 20I3. Well, we're starting right here. It's minus 40I3 going in that direction. And then plus 80. And I seem okay so far. What's the problem? Any idea? What should this current be right here? It says I3. What should it be? should be I2. That's the current through the one ohm resistor is I2. So that's something else that you'll need to look for is, is the, are the proper currents in the right places? Uh, 40 I3 plus 1 I3 minus 45 minus 30 I1. This one isn't correct either because this should be positive. Because I'm going 40 I, positive 40 I3 going against the current so it's positive plus 1 I3 still okay. Minus 45, that's okay too. But then when I come up here, minus 30I1, that should be plus 30I1 because I'm going against the current. So that one's not right. Hopefully this last one's right. I just pick a junction. Any junction, there are only two, either here or here. The incoming current is I3. Perhaps they're all wrong. Uh, the outgoing currents are I1 plus I2. Uh, which of these equations? Did I miss one? Oh no, C is right. What did I? No, that's not right. C's not right. Minus 30I1 plus 20I2 plus 1I2. No, it should, no, 2 is not, A is not right either. Because that should be minus 30I1. They're all wrong. Okay, I must have changed them with this. So, sorry, there's a mistake. But all of these, all of these equations are wrong. Okay? Need some practice with this, folks. It's going to be kind of a big part of the exam, multi loop circuits. It's kind of important uh, for you to be able to interpret these circuits. Uh, let's see, what else do you want to look at? More multi loops? Are you going to do some RC circuits? Y'all tell me. Yes, that's what I hear. Alright, let's look at the RC, and then we can come back and look at some multi-loop. There's a bunch there for you to practice. By the way, I pull these all just from the old exams, so even though we don't do them all here, you can find they're sort of interspersed from the old exams. check something. Oh, poopy. All right, so I put in some spring 18 questions. I guess I'm not going to use those. That's okay. 
I was going to use those on your test, but I'm not now. Okay. Because everybody has them now. Shoot. All right. What was I doing? I usually keep my banks separate. So I sort of create, I create new banks every year, but I guess I was in a hurry this afternoon. Eh, more practice for you. Okay, let's look at number 48. Now with the RC circuits, I'm really looking for you to be able to use, be able to work with those exponential functions and be able to solve for, uh, for various things. So here I have an RC circuit. R is one mega ohm. C is 5 microfarads and our voltage is 10 volts. It's charging because I know the capacitor initially has no charge and it's connected to the battery and a resistor. What is the charge on the capacitor after 5 seconds? So, what I do here is I want to know, first of all, is it charging or discharging? And I know because it says it has no charge and then you connect it to a battery. If it's discharging, it'll say you connect it to a battery and charge it up, and then you disconnect it from the battery and allow it to discharge. From reading the problem, it, it should be clear, is it charging or discharging? And this one is, is charging. And when it's charging, the charge is equal to Q, big Q, times 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. And by the way, the function for that looks like this, where this is a uh, time, this is charge, and it reaches some maximum value Q. Okay? Big Q is equal to C times V. That's just sort of our Ohm's law for capacitors. 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. And then I can put in my values. C times V, that's 50 microcoulombs. That's C right there, V right there. And then 1 minus E to the minus T, which is 5 seconds, divided by R times C. So R C is equal to 1 times 10 to the 6 times 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Often, usually, I give you resistors that are mega ohms and uh, capacitors that are microfarads, because those are sort of normal values that you'll have for your resistors and capacitors. It's not always that way, but I do it just to make the math easier. And notice that these two cancel out. And so my time constant, that's RC, is equal to 5 seconds. This is our time constant. And it goes right here, 5. And so then I can solve that at 50 minus, times 1 minus e to the minus 1. Make sure you can do it on your calculator. If you didn't do it in class the other day, you might want to try it right now. I do 50 times 1 minus e to the minus 1. Should be 50 here. I get 32. So 30 microcoulombs which sort of makes sense because my time constant is 5 seconds and I've had 5 seconds of that. So my time constant is right about here. I have about a third of my capacitor is charged. Or a little more than that. About two thirds, I guess, of my capacitor is charged. It's equal to 30 microcoulombs. Remember, how long does it take to fully charge the capacitor? In this case, what would it be? It would be 50 seconds. If we tried putting in 50 seconds, we would find that this e to the minus t over t, it would be e to the minus 10, is really small. Or excuse me, uh, yeah, it's really small. It's like 1.9 times 10 to the minus 22. So if I put in 50 seconds for t, this value is basically just equal to this value. It's fully charged. All right, I'll do that. Okay, it's not going to be much more than that. Okay, can I see it in your calculator? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't break it. Can you bring it back? All right. All right. Now, anybody else having trouble with that? With uh, in your calculator? Maybe you haven't used exponentials in a long time.
okay, Phil? Did you get it? Let me see. All right. All right. Let's see. What else you want to do here? Make sure you can identify what's charging or discharging. Uh, if it's voltage, actually, if it's anything but charge, charge is really the only one that's different. With charge, when I'm looking at the charge, when it's charging, it looks like this. When it's discharging, it look like, looks like this. Everything else will always look like that. Okay? So, um, yeah, I think that's right. My voltage is always going to decrease, right? No, my voltage should also increase. So that would be charge and voltage will look like this. All right. Think about what your, if you think, look at your equation sheet, the growth function has that 1 minus e to the minus t over rc. That's this function. And the decay function is just e to the minus t over rc. One of them goes to 1. This function goes to 1. It's a growth function. This one goes to 0. It's a decay function. All righty. What else do you want to look at? You want to do more multi-loop? Do right-hand rule? Right-hand rule? All right, let's just do a few of those. Um, let's do this one. This is a negatively charged particle. It enters a magnetic field. What is the force acting on the particle? Right hand. Uh, fingers in the direction of the velocity. You have to rotate your hand around like this. And then you're, you don't know if your hand should go like this or like this, but you know that your fingers have to be in that direction. But the magnetic field is into the page. That's what all the X's mean. And your fingers have to fold towards the magnetic field. Or you can think of the magnetic field has to originate out of your palm. It has to come out of your palm. Or if you want to hold your fingers like this, Velocity, magnetic field, force, and then you can rotate that however you want. Velocity, magnetic field, force. And so in this case, if the thumb shows the direction of the force, which is up, but that's not the answer, and why is it not the answer? It's not up. What's the answer? We'll read the problem. Let's see. Negatively charged particle enters a magnetic field as shown. It is down, but why is it down? Because it's negative. So if you have a negatively charged particle, you use your right hand rule, but then you just take the opposite of what you picked. Because it's negative, right? And you just do the opposite. You certainly encounter that. Uh, some of these other things we haven't gotten to yet. So, like 53. Uh, Let's look at 54. We're going to have one like 54 next time. This is kind of a cool thing. I have this unknown particle that travels through a magnetic field. It, it starts going in this direction, but when it enters the magnetic field, it experiences a force that pulls it up, and it goes off in this direction. It's an aspect trauma. So what is the charge of the particle? Well, my velocity is in this direction. My force is in what direction? Up, down, in the phase, what? For this particle. What is the direction of the force that alters the path of this particle? Now the, the force pulls this particle up, causing it to travel like this. It's an upward force. So I have my velocity like this, my force is in this direction, but my magnetic field is out of the page. If this was a positively charged particle, the force would be up. Or excuse me, if this was a positively charged particle, the force would be down, like that. So therefore we know that this is what charged particle? It's negative, because it's experiencing an upward force, not a downward force. A positively charged particle would, would go the opposite direction, it would go like this. 
but a negatively charged particle is going to go down. Right? Positively charged particle would go like that, positive, but a negatively charged particle will take an opposite direction for the force because it's negatively charged. Right hand rule is kind of important for this upcoming test too. You'll see several different types of applications. We've only seen one in the class so far, but you'll see several different types of applications. All right, um, let's do one more. Right hand rule. All right, what about 59 here? My velocity is positively charged particle, so nothing pink is going on. It enters the magnetic field to the right. What is the direction of the force? Well, we have to have our fingers down like this. We want to have our magnetic field coming out of our palm. So it's going to look something like this. So our fingers hold towards the magnetic field. And then our thumb is the direction of the force. What is the direction of that force? Out of the page. Because your thumb points out of the page. I find that when you're doing this, that you sort of need to have your hand over the problem. It always helps me. So I can orient my fingers with a vector. So if you have your paper on the, on the desk, on top of your paper. Okay. Uh, Y'all want to do more right hand rule, or you want to do some multi loops, more RC? Everything. All right, let's go back and we'll do another multi loop, and then maybe we're gonna do another RC, and maybe we can even get in another uh, right hand roll. Let's do 15. This one's a little simpler. It's not a multi loop circuit, but it's a multi battery circuit. And that's why I included it here. Um, here I want to know what is the current in this circuit. In order to figure that out, we have to use the loop rules. Because I have two batteries, and they're actually not in the same direction. If they were in the same direction, we could just add them up. But they're not in the same direction. Now you don't really have to use the loop rule, but it's you are effectively using the loop rule whenever you solve this. So I'm going to just pick a direction. I'm going to pick a direction and, and go, say, in this direction. And then I'm also going to pick a direction for the current. And so let's say that the current is in the same direction. I pick a direction for the current, and I pick a direction for the travel that I go through the circuit. And then I write the equation for each one. In this case, I only have one current, so I'll just call it I. The first one is 2I. Actually, no, it's not. It's what? Negative 2I, because when you go with the current across a resistor, the potential is negative. The potential difference is negative. Plus or minus 12. Plus 12, because I'm going from big to little. My electrons actually gain energy as they go across that battery. Minus 6.6 I. Plus or minus 18. Minus 18, because my electrons actually lose energy as they go across that battery minus 1i, and then that's equal to 0. And then I solve that for i. I get a 3 minus 9.6i minus 6 equals 0. So i is equal to positive 6 over negative 9.6, which is 0.63. And notice, what is the direction of this current? I chose it to be, that's what I think to be, what's that, counterclockwise. What is the final direction of this current? It's going to be clockwise. Because I chose it incorrectly. I know that because this value comes out to be negative. And if it comes out negative, that means I chose the direction of the current incorrectly. Sometimes on the test, you'll have uh, questions that already have the currents labeled. That doesn't mean that that's the actual direction of the current. It's just a direction that I've chosen for you just because of the way the problem is structured. But in some of them, you'll have to actually choose the direction of the current. Well, let's try this one right next to it, number 17. This is a good problem. Because sometimes I'll give you a complicated circuit, 
one that I wouldn't give you two otherwise, because just the algebra is too difficult. Or not, not, not even really difficult, it's just tedious and takes a long time. But I give you information that will make it easier. Uh, here, I'm not sure if you can see this, that's I1, that's I2, and that's I3. And I want to know what is I1, and then I tell you that I3 is equal to 2 amps. So, if I want to know I1, there are two potential loops that can tell me what I1 is. I can use the top loop right here, or I can use the big loop. Which one am I going to use? I'm going to use the top loop. Right? I'll use the top loop because it has extra information in the top loop, and then I know this current. And it's going to create an equation that will only have one unknown. There are other ways that you can get I1, but that's the best and easiest way. Now let's just pick a direction to go through. I'll just start here and go in that direction. So that's going to be 15 minus 7I1 minus 5I3 equals to 0. But I know that I3 right here is equal to 2. And so I have... Uh, 15, 5 minus 7i1 equals to 0, so i is equal to 5 sevenths, which is 0.7. All right? That's another way that I can take a multi-loop circuit that would otherwise be kind of difficult, a system of three equations with three unknowns, and just to make it easier. The other way is to give you a loop that doesn't have a resistor in it, and then it just reduces the number of unknowns that you have to deal with. Right. Oh, I said, uh, I know that this value is 10, and so I said 15 minus 10 is equal to 5, and then minus 7. Be careful, because as you know, one of the problems that you'll encounter is that as you're going through these equations, that you'll miss a negative sign, or you'll make a tiny little error, and then it affects your answer. And I know that like you might otherwise know how to do the problem, it's just you make a little mistake. But lots of practice will help you with that, and uh, it's going to give you sort of a clearer head on test day, and uh, just know better what to do with the the actual problems, and so then the math is just a minor issue. Okay? Lots of practice. Lots of practice. Oh, let me check something. Okay. Um, maybe about five or six more minutes. What would y'all like to do in the remaining time? Right hand rule or RC circuits? Go to a little more right hand rule. And tomorrow in class, I'm going to address some of the open stacks because I know that a couple of those problems are different. And I chose them knowing that, but I wanted to go over them in class tomorrow. Okay? So if you're not in class, make sure that you talk to one of your classmates to get an update on what happened there. Oh, let's look at 60. This is a good problem, too. There are lots of different things that come into play with this problem. A couple things I need to recognize is that, well, I have this charge. It traveled along this path, and I want to know what is the direction of the magnetic field. Recognize that it is a negatively charged particle, so whatever we find, we're going to take the opposite answer later. And what is the direction of the force this particle feels? What is the direction of the force? It's upward. I have this particle that's initially traveling in this direction, but then something pulls it upwards, the force due to the magnetic field. So, I start my velocity in this direction. Oh, and actually my force is in this direction too. And so my magnetic field should be, what? Into the phase, except it's a negatively charged particle, so it's going to be out of the phase. B is the right answer. Listen, I try to make it really clear. You will see some negatively charged particles, almost certainly. But I try to make it clear uh, that it's a negatively charged particle. If you get to a problem like that, maybe write that down in the side just so you don't forget. After you go through the, the problem, you don't forget to change your answer.
We're going to get to these things next time. All right, let's look at this one. So we'll see something like this in class, but you'll have already seen it. I have this proton that enters an electric field. And we want to have a magnetic field that, that acts on the proton such that it will go undeflected. Now, the force due to the electric field is going to be up or down. So if I have a proton in here, what, and it's in that electric field that's pointing upward, what is going to be the force due to the electric field, up or down? Y'all remember from chapter 2? Positive particles feel forces that's in the same direction as the electric field. So the electric force is going to be in what direction? It's going to be upward. The force due to the electric field is going to be up. If I want it to go undeflected, that means I want the net force to be zero. So that means that the force due to the magnetic field has to be downward. So what I have here is I have a velocity vector in this direction and a force vector in that direction. And I want to know what is the magnetic field. Well, my velocity has to be in that direction. But my force has to be in that direction. And so my magnetic field has to be in what direction? Out of the page. Okay, so the answer here is B. There are several things that you have to go through in that. First, you have to figure out what is the force to the electric field. If this is positive, it's in the same direction as the electric field. If this is negative, it's in the opposite direction. And we'll encounter that tomorrow in class. Then you have to realize that I'm just dealing with this problem. If my velocity is in this direction, my magnetic force is in that direction, what is the magnetic field? This is a common technique to direct the motion of charged particles that you use both electric fields and magnetic fields to, to move the particles where you want them to go. It's a pretty nice technique. Those old televisions, the CRTs, they use this method. The big televisions and the wooden cabinets, y'all have any of those? Yeah. We had one when I was a kid. It was like a 24-inch television. It was in this huge cabinet, and when it would start going fizzy, you go and bang on the top, and then it would, that would help. I don't think you can bang on flat screens. That doesn't really do anything to do. Okay? All right, one more, and then we'll be done. Uh, we'll see some of these others next time. Did we do 59? I think we did one very simple. Fifty-eight. We done something like that. Okay. What about seventy? Let's check it. It's an electron. It's an electron, so it's to the left, or to the right, rather. Let me show you. So V goes up, magnetic field is out of the page, and so it seems like the force should be to the right, right? Is that what y'all are thinking? But it's an electron, 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 and so the force is actually the opposite. It's not to the right, or it's not, yeah, it's not to the right, it's to the left. The force is to the left. Y'all said right? I don't remember either, but the answer is to the left. Okay?
Why is what coming that way? That's just what it is. The, the points represent like an arrow coming towards you. Is that what you're asking? The blue dots. The blue dots. That's the Okay, guys. Well, we're going to stop there. Uh, I'll see me before you leave.